Hello Geminis, welcome to your love reading for February 2020. So if you are a Gemini, Sun, Moon, Rising, or Venus, this reading is for you. And if you are on the cusp of a Taurus Gemini, please watch my Taurus video as well as this one. And if you are on the cusp of a Gemini Cancer, you may want to watch my Cancer video when I get that one out, okay? Which I should be tomorrow. Okay. Um, if you do not know your rising Venus or moon sign, I did include a link down below in my description box where you can click on the link to the website and type in your information and figure out what's in all your areas of your uh, astrology zodiac. Okay. And um, these will not resonate with all of you. Okay. So if you would like your own personal reading from me, all my links are also down below. And so Gemini, after shuffling and concentrating on your sign, I drew the card engagement. These two, the bird, the stork, the ship, the heart, the dog, the book, the card size. Uh, think of, you know, when someone sighs like, like that. <laughs> and the merchant and the card um, cheerfulness. All right, let's see what's going on here. Let's we'll start with these three. So engagement. Your love life is ascending to a higher level of commitment. So somebody wants a um, more committed relationship, it looks like. Even if this is not an actual engagement to get married, this could be someone wants to take it to the next level. Like, uh, you know, like in the olden days, during my parents' age, when they were teenagers, they called it going steady, right? <laughs> so maybe somebody wants to go steady with you, or maybe this is how you feel about them. But here's the problem, because I did also draw these two cards here, there, I feel like there needs to be an apology first before uh, this can happen, but someone is in denial about what they might have done. So, so it's almost as if somebody really wants this relationship to go forward or move forward, but there has to be this first, but they don't want to deal with that, you know? Or perhaps they've said something wrong. Um, hmm, we'll see what my Lenormand cards say. These are, by the way, my cards that I designed. They're called, How Do You? How do They Feel? So my, the link is down below if you would like to order a deck of these. All right. So I'm going to start with the birds and the heart, okay? So the birds can be a card of overexcitement or nervousness, sometimes unstable feelings. The birds is also a card of worries over a lover sometimes. Um, whenever I get it next to the heart card. The heart is about feelings. The heart is about romance. The heart is about love. It's very obvious here. And it, it, it is a good card overall, but when you have it next to the, when it now sometimes this can mean soulmates. Okay, the birds is also two of something. Okay, so for some, you could be going from one lover to the next. And I say that because when it comes to the bird card, we usually see this card in the Lenormand system as a scattered, right? What I said, scattered thoughts, maybe. Um, the birds are very hectic. It can go either way. Like I said, this could be about couples, two of something, soulmate connection or soulmates, and you do have the heart next to the birds. But the birds can also be a lot of nervousness and scattered because think of when birds fly all over the place, right? They never stay in one place. Besides their nest, they always go and, you know, they fly to different areas, right? Birds kind of, that's what the bird's card is about in general, okay? So when I have both of these or the birds next to the heart, I feel like there's like a, there's too many distractions getting in the way of this relationship or there's too many distractions getting away, I'm sorry, getting in the way of if you are single, for example, trying to find or meet people. And another meaning of this pair is a lot of communication between you and someone else. Like uh, a lot of text messages, a lot of phone calls. And again, the birds can be about stress. So possibly what could be also happening or did already happen is a lot of stress over feelings. Or this could be gossip. Maybe one of you overshared your feelings to the other person or that someone wants to follow their heart yet these desires cause a lot of nervousness here and for others this can be a very strong couple like i said the birds can be two of something or a couple like a soulmate connection okay who tries to stay together regardless of what life throws at them okay but this can also be 
sometimes it could be like annoying feelings over someone else. Like someone might have overstepped their boundaries, I guess, although I'm not seeing a boundary issue here. But I feel like for some, maybe someone opening up to you made them nervous, or maybe this person is too interested more than you are interested in them. Or maybe you're, maybe this person, for example, let's just say, I'm not getting cards saying that they're like this, but let's say, for example, somebody's very sure of themselves. They know who they want, but this, the other person, whether it's you or them, isn't so sure of yourself. So uh, maybe them uh, talking so clearly and so openly about their feelings for you got you or they got pretty nervous, whoever this was. Um, that could have been another issue that was going on here. And then we have the, si the size card below. So this is a card of loneliness or grief, or um, I believe it's also about uh, prioritizing things in your life or th your relationship because we are, um, this is a love relationship, right? So I kind of feel like this is saying that someone needs to pay more attention to the other person or that this relationship or again if you're single maybe when you meet someone it's like this relationship or person requires a lot of attention maybe that's too stressful for you or maybe this is saying in general if you are already with someone there needs to be more focus on this relationship because there's too much going on here and it's making one of you or the other person feeling very lonely okay this could be uh you know your wife your husband if you're already taken for example and for singles, uh, this may be that you're way too busy with other issues in your life, and maybe that's causing too much interference with your romantic life in general. Or that you're seeing or dating a lot of people, and that's okay, but yet it's like you still feel a bit lonely or scattered because you just can't seem to focus on just one person at a time. So uh, in other words, if you are in the dating field, like you're just playing the field right now, you're not committed to anyone, there's no cheating, you're just dating more than one person, that's okay. But maybe you've kind of gotten yourself to the point where it's like all these people you're talking to, you're still feeling lonely. You're not really finding that connection that you want you're still it's like no matter how many people you're dating or chatting with or uh, you just met uh, you still feel like there's something missing here okay i'm not saying that's for all of you again i'm different i'm giving different storylines i'm giving different meanings okay so that could be another issue that's going on here i, I mean it's not like it's bad with the birds in the heart but you do have the size so it's kind of like, like mm, next okay next what is your favorite color? Mm-hmm. Okay, whatever. Next. Okay. Are you a conspiracy theorist? Oh, okay. You're a sheep? Okay, next. Okay. Um, or maybe they don't like conspiracy theorists. I'm just saying. It's it's like it's like no matter who you date, you just don't feel that click. I, I feel like this is gonna be more for you singles. But again, this is just part of the reading. I'm about to move forward, so get ready. All right, so let's look at the stork and dog. Okay, these two. So the stork is returning or reoccurring issues. Okay. This is the card that I usually go by when someone's coming back. So this could be an ex that you're dealing with or an ex-husband, wife, etc. okay? Or maybe somebody that you didn't ac actually ever get with, but maybe you've known them for a while and a relationship was kind of, maybe you were dating them, but it just never got to the ground and maybe they're coming around again. All right, but this can also be, re like I said, reoccurring issues, an issue that comes back again, whether good or bad, okay? But it is also a card of major change and transitions, okay? When the stork is here, this is usually a, a huge transformation. Or um, it could also be uh, listening, following your own instinct, um, your own inner drives, right? Moving forward. <laughs> kind of like the ship card. We do have the ship card here. All right. So we also have the dog. Oh, by the way, this could also mean longing for someone or longing for something. Okay. And the dog is a friend. The dog is a card of loyalty. Someone who was loyal, think of a dog, how are dogs, you know? I always have this little joke, like a cat is, is your master, but a dog is like your, your everything. <laughs> okay, so, <clears throat> so the dog again is a very faithful and loyal person, a very submissive person, or that this also means a lot of support, okay? 
but it can also be sometimes the other man when it comes to the Lenormand uh, just like the snake card can be the other woman while the dog card can be the other man or the other person either one okay but sometimes um, the dog can also be did I did I mention submissiveness like following or I guess I wanted to say someone that does whatever you tell them to do sometimes okay it depends on the question and everything else okay so I will say this though if this is a third party situation <laughs> um, because the dog can be a friend so for some of you this could rep represent that this friendship turns into something more or that maybe the third party is a long-term friend that you've known forever and then you guys have started having an affair sometimes you know again I'm giving different meanings here don't freak out okay um, or that this relationship is not really as physical and then it becomes more physical okay Um, by looking at both of these though, I feel like <sighs> this is like a relationship that transforms into something more loyal or a change in loyalty. So I feel like it's like, this is really 50, 50 here. Someone suddenly becomes more loyal or someone becomes less loyal, not as loyal. But you do have, in all fairness, since we're looking at top to bottom, or this would actually, no, sorry, screw that. <laughs> I mean, retract that. <laughs> I didn't mean to say screw that. Oh my God, so sorry me. This is normally what, when you're doing this uh, six card spread here, this is the house. So the stork is basically, yeah, I guess, I guess the same thing. Stork is first. So a change in loyalty or a drastic transformation of, becomes more loyalty. Okay. But again, it could go either way here. But the dog would normally come to the right of the left if we're looking at it in a right and left area. So basically, this would be the stork and the dog. Okay. So anything to the right, or I'm sorry, any yeah, anything to the right of the first card that you draw is usually more of this happens because of this. Okay. So it's possible that someone returns back to you, or at least tries to. Maybe this causes nervousness. Maybe that's why. Um, or maybe this person, I feel like if they do, they're going to try to become more faithful than they were before if there was issues with loyalty before. For others, this can be either the other man or third party leaves the relationship so that you and this person can work out your relationship again. Okay, there's many different meanings with both cards. Okay. Um, hmm. So this, again, this could be loyalty returns or the third party returns. Maybe that's another thing for some of you. Um, the stork and dog can also be about winning someone's loyalty back or trying to win this person back. And it could also be longing for support, right? Because this is longing for something and the dog is also a card of being very supportive, needing more support. And then we have the merchant card. Very interesting here. Because the merchant card, think of a merchant, right? It's more about goals, transactions, taking advantages. Um, it's a card of trade, right? Usually this is more a business type of, or a commerce type of uh, meaning here. But in a relationship reading, I tend to see the merchant card as someone sort of like, uh, hmm, like the words fair trade, right? So it's almost like someone trading someone else for another person. Should I? Say that again. <laughs> Trading one person for another. Mm -hmm. Or possibly buying someone's affection or loyalty. It's like some kind of, I wouldn't say bribery, but it's more like making a deal, negotiating. Very interesting here. Maybe someone's going to use this as guilt. Well, I give you everything. I pay all the bills. I take care of the children. I pick them up from school. I work 60, 80 hours a week. Someone might lay the guilt trip on you in a very nice way in order to get you to change so that you become more faithful and submissive to them. I'm not seeing any uh, a dominant type cards. I don't have the bear card here. So I don't have any controlling or abusive cards like the whip. So I'm not really saying that as in they're going to blackmail you sort of thing, but I feel like this person might try to offer you something. So when we look at the merchant, maybe it's not actually buying you back, 
but let's say negotiating or kind of selling you, you know, you know that that's what people do, right? They sell themselves when they're on dating websites. Oh, look at me, look how pretty I am. Blah, blah, blah. I'm this six feet tall, I weigh this many pounds, this is my sun sign, da 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 da. It's advertisement. You're advertising yourself, just like a dancer does on stage when she gets all the tips so the guys want to get lap dances from her afterwards. That's all advertisement. This is advertisement for me. So this person might be trying to really put on this, um, I don't see a fakeness about them though. I'm not seeing like a false mask or the, or the fox card here, but it's like this person tries to get you to come back by negotiating what they can do for you. Or maybe they, maybe it's because they're gonna, uh, they're going to mention all the stuff that they knew that you did for them. Hmm. This could be a little bit tricky with relationships, but I gave you what I think it might mean. <laughs> I've been reading those for a few years, just saying. So, uh, what else? Some of you may even be involved with helping someone get a green card, for example. That's what another meaning could be with the merchant card, by maybe marrying them. And after all, we do have the engagement card here. Or, for example, a, mar a mail order bride. After all, the stork and ship are both in the reading here. So some of you could be dealing with a faraway lover. And I'm not judging the mail order bride and, or the um, green card, but this could be something that has to do with that because after all, the merchant card is here. For some of you, this could be prostitution or maybe you fell in love with a stripper. What was that song by, what's his name? It was like 2005 or 2006. He was, it was called, I'm in love with a stripper. What was his name? I know the song, I just, I, I forget the guy's name. Oh my God, anyway, that's the song I'm picking up now. <laughs> Some of you could be in love with a dancer, okay. But anyway, no judgment there. <laughs> but if not, you know, what, if, if this is not a mail order bride or trying to marry someone for a green card or help them get into the country, and I'm not judging that, but if this is not about anything like that, then there's what I was talking about beforehand, about some kind of negotiation or trying to buy someone's affection. And I don't mean like giving you money to, so you be with them, but some kind of way to impress the other person by putting yourself out there for sales. And again, this would make a lot of sense if you're single anyway, because that's what people are pretty much doing when they go on a, um, single websites and all of that, dating websites, whatever you want to call it. They're sort of, advert their profile is the advertisement. So other people are interested in them. So that's just basically common sense, right? So the stork, again, like I mentioned, can be a card of overseas or someone who lives far away. Then we have the ship and book. So let's take a look at these two. And the book, um, the ship is about travel, adventure, exploring, but also moving away, long distance. And the book is a card of knowledge, education, the truth and facts, or sometimes the unknown, okay? Because it's known as the secret card. Or that something's just not, it's something's hidden basically, okay? So together, this is like looking for truth. Or on the flip side, this pair can be avoiding the truth because sometimes the ship can mean avoiding something. Absent-minded, right? So, and you have, but here's the, here's the interesting thing. You have the cheerfulness card. So it's like someone's going to be maybe playing it down. Like they don't want to know the truth or they're just going to think everything's okay by avoiding the truth plain dumb. Oh, hey, everything's great. No worries. Go, go about your day. Go about your day. Even though I'm nervous <laughs> up to my eyeballs about all this because my feelings are very strong, but I keep them inside here. Even though I know you're the one that's the most loyal to me, but I don't know if I can offer you or have enough money to take care of you. So I'm very frustrated with myself, but I really do want to be engaged with you and have a future with you. And maybe I'm the one that needs to make this apology, but I am very much in denial that I need to do this in order to make this something that we could be happy with. That's a lot of energy right there. So here's what I'm kind of seeing here. You could be uh, exploring the unknown with someone else or leaving behind the well-known. It's Or maybe what I mean is, maybe you're leaving behind the type of people that you normally would be with because you're so comfortable with the, this type of person. Or you're kind of uh, 
wanting to explore different kinds of people, right? Or possibly moving away towards emotional thinking. Or, or because you are used to thinking too much with your head instead of your heart. Or what if, what if someone is avoiding their feelings, right? Because they know true feelings shown by <laughs> the bird in the book is what they are trying to avoid. And I did pull the in denial card. So it's like some of one of you knows the truth. One of you does. And if we look at the rows of three sideways, so if we look at this row and then this row, okay, I guess I could also look at this row. <laughs> the bird, the stork and ship. Okay, anxious over a big change that you want to explore or want to leave behind. Or how about attempting to change everything at once. I'm kind of leaning a little bit more towards worries over someone leaving because that's what this can mean and that's what this can mean. Uh, this could also be someone comes back just to leave once again. So here's that returning card. Uh, oops, oh, you're back so soon. Oh, I'm so happy, let's reunite. Oh, I guess you're leaving me again. Someone's scared of their feelings. Someone is very scared of their feelings, very frustrated. So they really try to play it off like they're fine. And so one of you could just be an option here and that's really getting to you guys. It's like someone feels like they're just an option or only an option. So if we look at the heart, dog and book, now if we look down here, <laughs> we have more stories going on here. A, someone's keeping their feelings a secret or B, someone's keeping their boyfriend or other, other, the other person a secret or a third party a secret or C, someone wants to reconcile without having to explain the underlying facts about why or what they did wrong. Okay, the book is a truth card and what card did I draw from this deck? Truth. Truth. They're right next to each other too. Hey, maybe this is even D, right? <laughs> Someone is too codependent on thinking logically rather than emotionally because the heart is emotion and the book is all logic, intellectual. So I feel like some of you are dealing with two people or two separate feelings. It's like some of you are literally dealing with that angel and devil on your shoulder. Which do I choose? Should I think more with my heart or do I think more with my head? Because the book is all about intellectual thinking, analytical, emotions, love, compassion, feelings, feelings and thinking. And you're stuck in the middle. Or some of you are really actually dealing with more than one person. But one of them shows you more love and emotion or that's more romantic. Yet the other person gives you a lot of intimate and in, in, intellectual thinking they really get you to think and this one really gets you to feel and you're like what the hell do I do now which one do I choose gosh Gemini this is such a Gemini type reading because I'm not surprised because there are you know the, the same Gemini there's twins one of each <laughs> Dr. Jekyll and Dr. Mr. Hyde <laughs> that's a no-brainer all right so I'm surprised the crossroads card didn't show up here but you know, sometimes the messages come in different cards. <laughs> I feel like some of you, if you're dealing with more than one person, I feel like you want to keep both of these people or all your lovers around because neither of them show enough emotion and intellect at the same time. So you feel very balanced with keeping them both around in your life. And may, or maybe you're actually dealing with the, the person that you're dealing with is doing this to you. Mm -hmm. Or emotions begin to become more logical since the book, after all, does come to the right of the dog, okay? So in some cases, one of you is going from following your heart, like I said, to following your head. And this is, what does a dog mean? One of the meanings here, following, submissive, obedience. These cards never fail me, never fail me. 
And, uh, you know, when I mentioned some of you are following your head, <laughs> uh, maybe you're following a man's head. And I'm not talking about the head on his shoulders. <laughs> sorry, that's shame on me. Shame on me, shame on me. Sorry, I just had to go there. Sorry, sorry, sorry. It's just a joke. It's just a joke. But maybe that's what it is. Maybe he has such a big heart, but the other man has a, a big something else. So, all right. <laughs> So if we look at the last two cards for the outcome, the birds in the book, okay? This is cluttering your mind with too much information. And perhaps this is too much what ifs being thrown around here for this month. Remember, this is just for the month of February. Or you're maybe you're worried about some kind of truth or worried about a secret, right? Some kind of information you don't want to get out. Who can this be about? Is it the other party? Or maybe this other party lives far away. This other party may be out of state, but you're always worried that the person you are with, or maybe the couple of three or five people that you're casually dating might find out about each other. I feel like if you are dating casually, there's two of them that do live far away though. And you're more worried about the ones that do live far away. It's like you have more feelings with this person that's farther away from you. You're worried about that person leaving you, but the one that really has your mind, you're actually more worried about the way they stress you out, or maybe they make you feel nervous or vice versa. It's like there's so much going on here, but you really do try to pull it off like everything's okay. And that's good, that's positive thinking. But is it really positive or is it just being in denial without working through this inner chaotic uh, roller coaster of thoughts going in your head this month, Gemini? <laughs> Jesus Christ, what do I do with all this? <laughs> I'm just telling you what I see, okay? <laughs> what did I say? What ifs? Uh, yeah. Or you might be just be worried about some, like I said, some kind of information. Maybe this is worried about selective memory. Someone might pull that on you. <laughs> but this is all about jumping to conclusions also. So Gemini, I feel like don't worry too much because overthinking could cause way too much stress this month. Take one day at a time. I feel like all the facts and information will soon come within time. You don't need to know everything this month. And again, this might not be you. This might be the other person that wants so much attention from you and so much information out of you, but maybe that's what's going on here. You, you kind of want to remain mysterious to this person and you don't want to have them make you feel like you're desperate because you might be going through a time where you're just ready to settle down. Maybe you're getting a little bit older now and you're kind of Where's my perfect Mr. or Mrs. Right? But maybe they're just not here yet because it's not Mr. or Mrs. Right timing. <laughs> so that's what I have for you, Gemini. I hope this reading helped you. If it didn't, very sorry. Um, if you would like your own personal reading from me, all my links are down below. Thank you again. I will see you guys on my next video.